Um, I think the more ways you can advertise the Learning Circle, obviously, um, if you're in a community location and you can use Nextdoor or Meetup or any of those um, resources, social media, of course, if your library has a newsletter or a website or an online calendar, um, obviously talk it up there. Something else that's a really good way to get people interested in a Learning Circle is to get a community member involved. Um, maybe a community expert, somebody who knows things that other people don't, and uh, give people the opportunity to meet and interact with that person. Um, it might be a local historian, it might be a local author, it might be a gardening expert. And um, it, people get to, um, to speak with that person one-on-one, -on -one, and then the person is there in the learning circle to answer questions, to be part of the discussion, and then um, Community members usually have their own network, and so they can word of mouth it out to others. Oh, I'm going to be at the library next week talking about my new book. You should come. It's kind of similar to our uh, branch libraries. You know, the staff tend to know those patrons in that community pretty well. And so if people come up and ask about um, when are you going to have a class on such and such, um, the branch staff are able to then refer them and even sit there and help them get registered. Um, we actually rely on that pretty heavily because a lot of our participants aren't as digitally literate as they might need to be to do an online, a basic simple online uh, registration form. And so uh, we really rely heavily on word of mouth like that and flyers. Now we do also post on social media and um, you know, we post it on our website and things like that, but in a lot of cases, obviously, with people who aren't really engaged with technology like that in their daily lives, those social media posts aren't going to reach them and aren't going to be effective. But we do those posts anyway, um, maybe with the thought that somebody will read them and they might ne not really need or be interested in this course but maybe they know someone maybe their mother could use some help or their grandmother or their cousin or somebody and so you know we we don't know for sure how effective it is but it's just the age we live in and so we can't not do it I mean, some people use, of course, um, online media, uh, or social media, rather, um, Facebook invites. Um, generally, as a, as, a, as a toolkit, we use a lot of Facebook invites for any program. I think for many of our learning circles, Facebook is not necessarily the way to go because that many of our um, learners are not uh, necessarily connected to social media. So depending on the course, it's really not, it, it may or may not work that way. Um, I do think that if you do use Facebook or something like that, and if you, ha you set it up as an event, um, that way people can share it more easily and if people click interested, if I click interested for instance or going, then my friends are going to see it and their friends are going to see it, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll create a, a link and I'll say, I'll ask people, ask my colleagues, just say you're interested, even if you're not, like just do it. Um, but for, for our classes, um, calling people was the way to go and really talking it up to library patrons was the way to go really saying when people are, are checking out a book like hey did you notice um, you'd mentioned that um, that you were interested in learning computer skills and we're having this series that's happening so I think it's really making sure that you get buy-in from um, the staff at the library and really making it into a cool thing um, letting them know how, how cool and how awesome it is so that it's something that people can say hey um, this is really cool there's going to be a course and and you know you can learn a new skill I think it really just depends on your community. If you're um, a library that's associated with a community center or are near even something as simple as an urgent care and you can put flyers there that say, hey, you know, you're sitting around waiting, um, here's some information about the library or who's, here's some information about what we do. I think really knowing your community and knowing where people congregate and where people find their information is key. Um, in some of our communities, we've put information at barber shops because that's a place that people congregate and go frequently. And when there's information about the library there, people, you know, check it out while they're, re while they're waiting and then might stop in afterwards. 
we have a great marketing team in our free library. Um, and um, so here's a flyer that they created. It's, a, it's actually a flyer shell, so it's got some of the uh, little markings here. And the idea is that you can fill it in with whatever content you want. So like you would say, um, typing tutorial Tuesdays, you know, August 15th through September 15th or whatever at 10 o'clock a.m., et cetera, et cetera. So you can fill in whatever content you have, but this is the actual shell that sort of brands and roots the program series into, um, into a particular um, uh, look. Um, and it can be used for any, any library branch that, that the uh, program is taking place in. So it says, learn something new together in your neighborhood library for free. Um, as part of Peer-to-Peer -peer University, join a study group of learners who want to complete online courses together in person. These are peer-supported courses designed to be taken by anyone. So this sort of tells you exactly what it is that you're going to get. Um, and it's a look that is consistent with the uh, PTPU logo and it of course has our free library logo as well. I'll sort of show that a little bit more closely here. We had great turnout and we had great retention too. So um, I don't think all the people that put the sticker dots came back for the classes, but the topics were ones that resonated with people in the community and they were things that we didn't think about. So then they promoted those things to their friends too. So people that really wanted that class invited other people. So we had really good turnout and we had really great retention for those classes.